QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Deposit Form. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in the QuickBooks desktop sample rock castle construction practice file provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process, maximizing the homepage to the gray area, going to the view drop down, open windows list on the left hand side, opening up the major financial statements by going to the reports drop down, company and financial, P and L, profit and loss, the income statement, in other words, date change, range change, 01012421234 January through December 2024 customizing the report fonts and numbers changing that font on up to 12 okay yes please okay and then we're going to go to the reports again company and financial open up the balance sheet this time the other major financial statement change the date 12312424 customize it so we can change the fonts and numbers there too and make it 12 again okay yes okay that's the startup process we do every time going back to the home page in prior presentations we've been talking about the customer cycle you also might know as the sales cycle the revenue cycle the accounts receivable cycle the customers meaning with QuickBooks, the people that we expect to be receiving money from typically at the end of the cycle for goods and services we provide to them. Remember that we could be actually customers in real life, but from a QuickBooks standpoint, we're looking at one side of the table here. These are people that we are selling goods and services for and hoping to get paid at the end of the process. We talked about different formats that could be taken depending on our industry that we are in such as waiting for the deposit to clear the bank and just entering the deposit form, possibly with the use of the bank feeds, like could be done possibly with gig work or having a cash based system where we have to then record the transactions as we receive them and then deposit them like a food truck possibly, or the full accrual system where we might use a, an invoice for work that we had done that we are billing or invoicing for like an accounting business, law firm, landscaping, or something like that. We're first looking through this full accrual process here. We talked about the invoice in the past, and then we went to the receive payment. Now the receive payment was a little bit tricky, you'll recall, because we know that the receive payment is gonna decrease the accounts receivable. Let's talk about the whole thing. The invoice is gonna increase the accounts receivable. The other side's gonna to go to sales. We're mainly concerned with the receivable then. Then we're gonna track the receivables to make sure that we get paid and we're gonna enter the receive payment when we get paid at that point in time. This part got a little bit tricky because it's possible that we deposit at this point in time with the receive payment form directly into the checking account. If I go to this form, in other words, I could see that I could include an option here to the checking account, which we saw that we'd have to turn that option on in the settings we looked at in the prior presentation to have that option. So you could deposit it directly into the checking account there. However, oftentimes you want to use the default setting, which is to put it into undeposited funds. There's a reason that's the default setting, and that's because it's possible that you're going to get paid in such a way that you're gonna to have to group those payments together and put them into the bank in such a way that they're gonna be shown on the bank statement. In other words, if you get cash payments, for example, then you might group those cash payments together that you got during the day and deposit them into the bank, multiple cash payments from different customers, and that's how it's gonna show up on the bank statement. If you deposit each individual customer payment in, in the books directly into the checking account, 
then it's not going to match what's on the bank statement. You're going to have to do some taking of some calculations on the reconciliation. You don't want to do that. You want to make it as easy as possible. Same thing could happen with the credit card. For example, the credit card company might group multiple customer sales, put them into the bank account in a grouped format. And you want to make sure that you have a system together so that you are doing the same thing on your end so that you can reconcile. And that's going to be an important kind of point there. So then we got the deposit. The last part of the cycle you can see is the deposit form. Notice they put it over here in the banking section, but they indicated with an arrow. It's kind of related to the customer cycle. And that's because most deposits were hoping increases to our checking account are coming from sales in some way, right? We're hoping that they're deposits from customers, but they might not be. We could have a deposit that happened because we put money in as the owner, investing money from our personal account into the checking account for the business, or we might've got a loan, for example. Those are, those are the two main examples of a deposit that was not from a customer from the business uh, in some way. So they kind of put it out here in between the two areas. Notice that that number two represents that we have something in undeposited funds. The something in undeposited funds is either from the received payment, which we saw in the past, or the sales receipt, which we'll talk about in the future. And you can see them reflected on the balance sheet with the undeposited fund account right here. So it's that's really a, a cash account. Notice it's not up here in the checking account area because from a QuickBooks standpoint, it doesn't act like a cash account, meaning it doesn't have any special need. You're not going to connect it to a bank feed or anything like that. So that's why, you know, they put it down here in this other current assets, which is a little bit kind of funny because again, you would group it in cash if you were to group all these things together typically. But in any case, if I double click on this and I say 010124, you could see that it's going to, it's going to go up with the payment and then it's going to go down with the deposit. So what we're going to do is remove it from undeposited funds if we're using this process and put it into then the checking account. That's where we left off last time. That would be the normal process or the next step. If I go back to the home page of the invoice, receive payment to the deposit. Now also just realize that the deposit form, you could think of it as the standard form that will be used anytime there's basically or pretty much anytime there's an increase to the checking account you could use the sales receipt so it's not always a deposit form but the deposit form is typically the form that you would use for an increase to uh the the checking account so if you had a system for example which was the easiest system that you can use where you're basically have a gig work situation and you're just getting paid by a platform you're not going to invoice you're not even going to create a sales receipt in that case but you're just going to wait till the thing clears the bank say like a youtube channel that gives you a payment or something you wait till it clears the bank possibly with the bank feeds you add it into the system as a deposit then even though you're using the bank feeds it'll usually go into the system basically as a deposit so that's another way that you might see that form if you're, if you're entering deposits directly into the system and they're not connected to undeposited funds, like you put money into the system uh, yourself, for example, or you're recording deposits manually kind of into the checking account based on the bank statement or something like that, then you might not, I wouldn't use this deposit form typically. Like if I double click on this or if I click on it, it'll open up this window, which will show those two items that went through either the receive payment or the sales receipt. And if you don't want to use those and you have another kind of deposit that you'll be dealing with, you can click off of this and you could just basically record the form or the, the account that you're receiving from. In other words, this is going to go into the checking account, the date, and then you've got the account that you're going to receive it from. So it, so if you're, if that's what you're going to do, sometimes it's easier to just use the register. So if I'm entering directly into the checking account, I might just go to the register. So in other words, closing this back out, you could find the check register here, or you could go to the, to the banking dropdown. This is how I usually do it. And you can go to use register and then find the checking account and go into the checking account register. So in the checking account register, you can enter a deposit. So for example, this, that's a journal entry, but let's go up to a deposit here. Here's a deposit. So here's a, a payment. It's a payment. Here's a, just a deposit that was recorded. So, so you can enter basically the account down here. This one was split.
but you can enter the account down here you can see the splits by going like this actually it's not opening the split you can double click and see the deposit form so there is that and then you've got the deposit field so this one is like kind of like a checkbook so this is the easiest kind of area i think if you're just manually if you're just doing a data input of a deposit but you could use the deposit form i'm going to close this back out i would typically use the deposit form when i'm connecting the deposit meaning i would click on the form on the home page when i'm connecting the deposit to the receive payment and the sales receipt because that number two once again represents the grouping these two items that i would like to match up meaning if i went into the bank and I grouped these together, like say these were two cash payments, they're not, but let's say there were two cash payments. If I deposited them together at one lump sum of 2,440, I wanna make sure that I, that I record that properly on my end as one lump sum payment instead of as two separate payments if they're gonna record that way on the bank statement, making my bank reconciliation, comparing our books, what we did on our side to the bank side easy that's that's going to be the point that's the whole point of that process so if i close this out and i look at a let's just look at a prior deposit you can see you got the checking account here you've got the date you got the deposit you got who it was received from now if this was connected to, to the to the sales receipt or received payment then it's going to pull this information in automatically from say the, the payment that was received which was pulled in from the invoice because you recorded that in the invoice so it's all connected which is nice it's going to the account of undeposited fund which again if this was connected which this one looks like it was would populate automatically and then you've got the check number uh, of and then the, the payment is going to be a check and then so these are the payments that we received we're not writing a check we're having a deposit here and then a class field we'll talk about classes later that's a specialty kind of area and then the amount that we're receiving notice we have two line items that were combined together so we didn't deposit them individually even if they were individual payments if we combined them together depositing them into the bank at the one uh, lump sum here so what's this form going to do it's going to increase the checking account and the other side is going to be recorded to whatever account it's going to be recorded to here typically undeposited funds if you're going through that process or if you if you were the one that put money in you could choose some other account that would be like an equity account here or investment from the owner or something so i'm going to close this back out and let's drill back down from the balance sheet then and think about that end result so let's double check double click on the checking account if i double click on the checking account change the date range 010124 so now we've got the deposits notice that the deposits are generally the things that are going to be increased in the checking account so that form that one form is generally going to be the main thing that increased the checking account although you could have a sales receipt right i mean you could have a a sales receipt and you could have a uh, a sales receipt and a received payment if you make these things go directly into the checking account so we talked about that with the, with the received payment not so much with the sales receipt we'll talk about that in the future but if you go through undeposited funds which is one of the nice kind of things then everything that's an increase is going to be a deposit if you drill down on the deposit it takes you to that deposit form even if you enter the deposit with a with like a bank feed or with the register which looks like a different data input form it will still use this deposit form when you drill back on the data. So even if you use a simplified, smaller registered data input, it's still using a full deposit form, which is something you wanna just kinda of keep in mind. So I'm gonna close that back out. So let's go to the balance sheet. So the deposit goes in, the other side will typically be coming out of undeposited funds, double clicking on the undeposited funds, changing the range from 010124. So now you've got the payment which increased the undeposited funds because we've received the payments from the customers and then the deposits decrease in the undeposited funds so let's close this out i'm going to close this out here and the main point i'm going back to the balance sheet just note that when it goes into the checking account i'm going to change the date 010124 then you want to make sure that when you have the deposit going into the checking account i went all the way down to the bottom on 12 12 24 here so this 493612, double clicking on that, the main point is if I had two line items 
I want to make sure that I've combined them together in such a way that it's going to be recording on my side that will match the bank statement side, making the reconciliation process as easy as possible. Okay, closing this back out, closing this back out. Just note that if you are in a system where you have like a simple system where it's like gig work and you're waiting for something to go through the, the bank and then record the transaction, then typically your income is gonna be recorded or your, your deposit will be recorded at that point in time. You're gonna be dependent on the bank to record it. And then the other side will go to the profit and loss to an income line item somewhere down here if that was the system in, in like a simplified type of system, which you could do possibly if you had gig work, you're getting paid by a platform that you just wanna wait till it clears the bank and then enter it into the system. So if I go back to the homepage, note then that you would be using this deposit form to increase revenue which isn't really what quickbooks is designed to do because it's used it's designed to increase revenue with an invoice or a sales receipt even if on a cash-based system so by doing that you you do limit some of your other reports possibly like sorting your information by customer or something like that but it might be totally worth it in terms of the ease of of that system if you get all your money from like a platform and, and it's an easy system to just wait till it clears the bank so just note on that you can use deposits in that way for gig work and also just realize that you can also think about other systems like if you had a full uh, accrual system that we'll talk more about in the bank feeds if you've got an invoice could you wait till something clears the bank and then connect the bank feed to the invoice or could i enter the receive payment and then wait till something clears the bank and connect the deposit to the receive payments or do i just want to record all three which is typically what you will do in a, in a full service accounting system and then connect the bank feed to the deposit that has already been recorded not so that you can double record it but then you would just be checking that it has been recorded matching it which would be kind of more of a bank reconciliation kind of process or system.